the monadology and the matrix. So let's think about the analogy of the matrix, and I'll explain to you what I meant by saying that the matrix is, is very indebted to Leibniz and the monadology. Okay, so let's think about the matrix narrative and let's recall that scene where Neo wakes up in the pod. And then he looks around and he sees like rows and rows and rows of pods. Um, now let's expand that picture, which goes beyond the narrative of the matrix, but let, let's, let's just start to play with that a little. And I'll try to get us to kind of reach to the point of jumping off into the monadology. Let's say that there's an infinite number of pods. So rather than just being a lot, let's make it infinite. There's an infinite number of pods. And all of these pods are tied into the matrix. And they're all experiencing that matrix as a virtual reality in which they all exist. But in some of those pods, the souls that are in those pods, that soul is attached to a mitochondrion inside of a, a skin cell. And then one of those pods is connected to the skin cell. And then one of those pods is connected to the entire skin organ. And then one of those pods is connected to my entire body, and that's me. And so on and so forth, all the way up to God. And, and in this structure, you know, the way that I'm interpreting the matrix and, and modifying it, God is in one of those pods. And it doesn't matter which one, where, they're, where it's located. Because, because uh, the, the location of a soul Uh, you know, God is not located anywhere. Okay, so, and I'll get to that. But let's say that God is, God is one of those pods. He's one of those people in one of those pods. And the matrix is our experience of the universe. In fact, the matrix is the universe for Leibniz. The, the, the universe for Leibniz is only what all of the monads perceive. And they perceive the same matrix because they choose to perceive the same matrix. So unlike the matrix, the matrix is not programmed to make people perceive what they perceive. So this is a little, another tweak of the matrix thing. It's not the matrix that is causing the perception of the people in the pods. The people in the pods are just willy nilly having perceptions and experiencing their own individual worlds, it just so happens that all of their perceptions fit nicely together because God chose all the monads, all the pods, so that they do fit together. And he excluded people who have random ideas that don't fit with this overall narrative of the matrix. And so the matrix is what we perceive, but 
and, and we all perceive a, a reality that fits together, but the, the uh, individual pods or monads within the pods are really just unfolding their own perceptions out of themselves, just like God is. So the monads are actually perfectly at rest and self-contemplating, just like God is. It's just when, when their self-consciousness unfolds, it unfolds into perceptions that just so happen to coincide with the perceptions of all the other monads in the universe. So again, this domination is merely, the hierarchical structure is merely a formal structure. No one, no one is really dominated in a moral sense. Everyone has perfect free will and is just unfolding their own, their own entelechy out of their own substance, their own formal cause is causing their perceptions. But it just so happens that all the perceptions fit nicely together because God chose it that way, because that's part of his nature to make that choice. And that's just an unfolding of the nature of, of God. That's just their choice. Um, so hopefully you can kind of picture this in your head, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, now what we want to do, you know, because I've already mentioned this, monads are not located anywhere and God isn't located anywhere. And the universe, of course, cannot be located anywhere either because the universe is the universe. If, if the universe were located somewhere, then it would be inside a bigger universe. But the universe is what it is, and it's not located anywhere. The only reason that we have an understanding of spatial relationships is that's how we make sense of our perceptions. But our perceptions unfold out of our own monad, out of our own soul. And so the physical universe is just an aspect of all the perceptions of all the monads and especially the perceptions of God who perceives simultaneously every level, you know, of, of the whole thing. But we're not quite we're not quite there yet. Um, so how do we how do we get all the way to the monadology? So what you want to do is think of the the pods in the big machine, the big reality that that um, that Neo wakes up into, and there's an infinite number of pods. But now get rid of the physical pods. Just think of the pods as being mathematical points, and you can't see them. And they're not located anywhere because location merely exists within the matrix, which is the universe. And so the pods are infinitesimally small uh, points that aren't located anywhere. They're merely the minds self-contemplating themselves in the spiritual dimension, which is which has no has no length, width, or depth. And the matrix, again, is not located anywhere. And it's not programmed by the machines you know, in the neo real world, that whole real world doesn't even exist. The real world for Leibniz is the matrix, 
but the matrix isn't programmed to make you perceive things. The matrix is just the confluence of everyone's own perceptions. And everyone's own perceptions are just free flowing in their own way. And the only reason that there's coherence is because God chose the monads so that they make a matrix that is rational. Hopefully you're able to follow that. I, I think it starts to really stretch uh, the capacity of our brains, but, uh, but that narrative of the matrix does help to get us there. Um, okay, so I'm gonna stop that there.